Welcome back guys. Uh, in this video we will be talking about the fibroblast growth factor or FGF. We have already talked about epidermal growth factor and we know that uh, the presence of growth factor is very very important for the proper signaling for cell growth and division. And now the fibroblast growth factor works slightly different than the epidermal growth factor because the responsibility for epidermal growth factor is solely for the cell to grow and divide, cell division mainly. But for the fibroblast growth factor or FGF, the function is the cellular proliferation and differentiation. So it's very much effective during the embryonic development and also it has some important role to play during the wound healing process in our body. So that is the major function of fibroblast growth factor. Now let's talk about uh, the structure of fibroblast growth factor and also we'll be talking about uh, the FGFR or fibroblast growth factor receptor and the signaling uh, where FGF is involved. So let's begin with that. So fibroblast growth factor is, uh, an, uh, is, a, is again a growth factor family protein uh, which is a, again a small protein just like the epidermal growth factor but the impact of this protein is extremely big and very very important. So let's look at uh, the signaling process because that's what we're interested in more. So if you look at the signaling process here, we know this is the cell membrane and there should be a receptor for a protein because fibroblast growth factor just like the epidermal growth factor uh, is a kind of growth factor and it's a kind of ligand. It requires a receptor for relaying the signal from outside the cell into uh, inside the cell. So there are re responsible elements that are present in cell membrane. Let's say the receptor here. So the receptor, let me draw the receptor. So the receptor here looks something like this and it has a kind of three domains just like immunoglobulin domains as you can see here. The structure of these domains that are present uh, by this uh, this epiderm this fibroblast growth factor are kind of immunoglobulin like domain or Ig like domain three different domains domain 1, 2 and 3 so these are the domains these are the extracellular domain domain 1, 2 and 3 that are present and it has only one transmembrane domain and tyrosine kinase intracellular domain so these are the this is the structure for epidermal growth factor receptor. Remember, because a growth factor is nothing but a small protein, but we are more interested in epidermal growth factor receptor or EFGR. This is the structure and it is embedded in the cell membrane. So outside the domain is responsible for interacting with the signaling particle and signaling molecule which is epidermal growth factor as well as they are found to be very much interactive with heparin sulfate residues that are present in the extracellular matrix of the cell and that's why the signaling is pretty important. So it is interacting with heparin sulfate residue as well as heparin that are coming out from the cell uh, are coming in, in the extracellular matrix and also interacts with fibroblast growth factor. So once it is sorry it is fibroblast growth factor receptor. I made a mistake during that time, so it's a rectifying process. Fibroblast growth factor receptor. This is so. Once we have this fibroblast molecule, the fibroblast molecule binds with the D3 domain. So if this is the D3 domain, so let's say D1, D2, and D3, the fibroblast growth factor or FGF here binds with the D3 domain of this fibroblast growth factor receptor molecule and upon binding of this fibroblast growth factor into the D3 domain of FGFR it triggers the change inside and the, the tyrosine kinase domain of the intracellular matrix for this FGF receptor start to be self phosphorylated so they are getting phosphorylated on their own so once they are phosphorylated, I think three times phosphorylation is done there. So once those tyrosine kinase receptors are phosphorylated, now they are ready to relay this signal downstream inside the cell. So that other important signaling molecules are getting activated, other kinases are getting activated and then finally they lead to the signaling of, remember the same kind of signaling for the cell proliferation and differentiation that's what the major task of epidermal growth factor signaling now after this phosphorylation there are many ways that they relay this signal to finally get into the cell growth and division because they also help in growth and division as well as in the proliferation and differentiation so for the cell growth the pathway is pretty similar just like the epidermal growth factor pathway 
involves in the process are called SOS. I mean GRB2 protein. So there is GRB2 and then it will interact with the protein SOS. Remember SOS protein is there. This is the SOS and once the SOS is activated, it will activate the RAV, uh, I mean RAS. Once the RAS is activated with GTP, RAS is activated RAF. RAF will activate MEK and MEK will activate MAP kinase and then MAP kinase will activate certain uh, type of transcription factors called Krebs. Once the Krebs are activated, those Krebs will go in, inside the nucleus and can produce proteins and, and, and actually help in production of, uh, I mean, uh, inside the nucleus they help in production of the mRNA and those mRNA will be, uh, I mean, uh, released from the nucleus into the cytosol and ribosome will sit on it and it will produce the protein necessary for cell growth and division like the proteins like uh, cyclines and also cyclin dependent kinases and also many other cell uh, cycle and cell division proteins. So that is a uh, one pathway of activation. I have not talked uh, this too much because I have already talked about this in the earlier video for epidermal growth factor. So I will recommend you to watch that video right now if you want to know about details about this process. So this is the link that is in the annotation as well as you will find the link in the description uh, or you can just search for epidermal growth factor receptor and signaling you will find my video now once uh, it is activated it will trigger the cell division and cell growth now what remains here is uh, the second other method of pathway which will actually help in the cell proliferation and differentiation okay so on the other hand what we know is that it can also activates another set of protein FRS alpha 2. Now once FRS alpha 2 this protein is activated, this protein will interact with other proteins like GRB2. So GRB2 will interact with this protein. Once the GRB2 is interacted then GRB2 can further interact with another protein called PI3K or PI3 kinase. Once PI3 kinase is activated, it can activate so let me draw this in different way. This PI3 kinase can activate another very major type of protein here and that protein is known as AKT or AKT kinase. Now this is a kinase protein. This AKT kinase is very much important because once the AKT kinase is activated, it is again uh, can help to produce more and more and recruit more and more transcription factors like CRIB because you know these are transcription factors. So they will bring upon more and more transcription factors which will go inside the nucleus. It will go inside the nucleus. If I draw the nucleus here, this is the nucleus say. It will go inside the nucleus and what it will do actually there is a gene inside the nucleus which we need to transcribe for the whole process. Let's say this is the gene and the promoter is also sitting there. So this transcription factor will sit on there and it will help in transcribing an mRNA for that gene, that important gene. This is the mRNA for the gene, let's say gene X. So this is the mRNA X. Now that mRNA will, brought, will be brought outside the nucleus and once we have this mRNA we will make proteins by translating the mRNA. Now those proteins are the important thing that we require because these proteins contain all the necessary things that means uh, the, the mo protein molecules that are helping in proliferation, helping in differentiation. That's why this whole system is important because rest of the stages, I mean this, if I want to discuss about this process it will take a very long time if we want to talk about each single stage in detail. But the idea remains the same. The thing is the signaling. This is the unique thing. Rest of the thing is common that is the normal eukaryotic transcription, eukaryotic translation production of proteins once we produce the mRNA remember obviously the mRNA maturation will also take place inside the nu nucleus here because the uh, splicing and addition of uh, 5 prime uh, cap and 3 prime polyadenylation everything done then the mRNA is taken out and the protein synthesis is done so ultimately this is how how AFGF works the fibroblast growth factor works and ultimately it interacts with in outside with D1 and D2 these different domains they interact with those heparin sulfate residues to actually maintain and get the signal to, to have an idea of how the neighboring cells are working whether there is any wound or not because if there is any wound the interaction between this D1 and D2 domain with the heparin sulfate which is present in extracellular matrix start to get I mean lost because due to the lack of cells outside. 
so they can sense the situation and they can uh, they can have the signaling of fgf inside to tell the cell grow and proliferate after any kind of wound that's why they are very much important during the wound healing process of our body right so that's in a sense and if we look at another very question that though these domains are kind of important when the domain can self ligate with each other sometimes to prevent that they have a kind of acidic res residue of amino acid in between to prevent that so so that's the overall process of how fibroblast growth factor and fibroblast growth factor receptor signaling works and i hope that's helpful if you like the video do not forget to subscribe there are two buttons here one button in the bottom here and also another one in this side so click this button and make sure you like it and subscribe it uh, and also i think uh, i hope for your best uh, for knowledge all the best